Hey guys, what's going on? Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Queen's Glean, the after conversation to King Speak. So on Tuesdays, we talked to the guys King Speak. We had Steven's story and the title of his episode was Built Different. So this conversation was so good, y'all. We talked for two hours, over two hours, actually. I didn't even ask him any of the questions that I had <laughs> in my notes. So if you have an opportunity to go back and watch that episode, please do, because it was really good. It's one of those things you can play in the background and get constant nuggets and gems for life, okay? Whether you're a guy or a girl. So that was really great. But you know, on Thursdays, what we do is get the ladies together, Queens Clean, and we talk a few of the topics that the gentlemen on um, Tuesday talked about. So that way, we can kind of give our input and our insight. The only way to harmonize relationships is if we talk to each other, understand each other. And it's not just romantic relationships, right? It's about harmonizing relationships between men and women as well, because there's stuff that leaks over into the workplace and whatnot. But without further ado, uh, let me get my girls in here. I want to give a shout out to Key Renee. It is her birthday today. So she's not going to be on panel and Queen Cookie has her baby seven, but we got a new girlfriend hanging with us today. And of course, let's get them up in here. The woman with the wisdom, you've seen the clips. Let me get Keandra in here. What's up, Keandra? Hi, Boo. Hi, Boo. Happy <laughs> Thursday. Happy <laughs> Thursday. And of course, my amazing and beautiful friend who is so well spoken and I miss her so much. Let's get Rhonda in the building. Oh, wow. Yay. Hi. Okay, get in. Hi, Yay. guys. I miss you too. Oh, hi. Hi, Keandra. I know. It's been a while. And happy you guys know each other. Here. We do. Remember, we met at the um, we met through you, as you always connect. Of course, people, we met at the um, the bonfire in Mon in Malibu. <gasps> that so was much fun. fun. Wasn't so that fun? fun? Yeah. Walk through really? that little jungle of uh, <laughs> of a little shortcut. <laughs> that he was did, he so, did not. That was want a journey. Us. He did not. Want that us. was so <laughs> extra. We had but no was idea amazing. who was out there. It that was. was amazing. That was fun. Oh, okay. another wild adventure. The, yeah. the pre, I'm wiping, you know, it. I feel like it's not clear. Oh, there you go. You was looking like you was in a dream, girl. Good morning. There we go. I was in a dream. <laughs> you was in a dream. <laughs> I have some cooking, some chicken cooking, and I finally turned it off. But one thing I know, we, I don't know, Rhonda, if you've been doing the same, but we've been cooking our tails off for this holiday season. Okay. Getting it in, honey. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been cooking in. since lockdown. I That's love it. True. That too. I feel like I'm cooking more because I am home more. And so exactly. it's kind of like before cooking for me That's was just kind of like, hey, I got to eat. Like it wasn't necessarily like this thing of, oh, let me try this new recipe. But since I've been home more and I'm actually like able to take my time and save my money and experiment, I'm enjoying the trying out new recipes and baking. I've been <laughs> baking so much. <laughs> I love it. We here on that, girl. We here. Well, in the chat, we have Black women in artificial intelligence joining us. She said last week was awesome. Thank you so much yes, for being with us last was. week. It was. It's Rhonda amazing. was actually in the chat. You know, that was a lot of fun, y'all. So it was. It was. We're about was to go so in on this. Yes. And have fun because Steven's story, okay. Um, I don't know if Rhonda, you were able to see the whole episode or you guys, but he was he had a lot to say. We talked for two hours. And so our topics for today's show are fresher than you because he was like i'm fresher i'm better like, like, this is, so we're gonna dump into that <laughs> is that can i pop is this the collar that it can pop because that, that was certainly his vibe and i was here for it I, I wasn't mad at it at all we'll get into it really? second yes and we'll go with the clip um the second topic we have is lack of self-neglect which sounds like um a synonym for self-care almost, but we'll talk about it. And then of course, survival mode and all the things that we get into in there. So overall, what did you guys think about our gentleman on Tuesday, Steven Story? Any words or, uh, you know, appreciation? <laughs> I was totally here for, you know, his, his candidness about I'm different. I'm built different. I make different decisions. And it started for him very early. And so I really could appreciate that he was clear on the fact that he's not like a lot of other men who make decisions, but don't necessarily think about the consequences in the future. And that he seemed to be very future forward thinking, um, 
very, very disciplined, which is, you know, always so great to, to, you know, to meet men. And a lot of it when he was saying like, you know, I'm different than, than other men, um, it kind of reminded me a little bit about Will Smith, right? Mm. Where he's like, no one is ever going to outwork me. And it's not that he said it in arrogance. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he was like, it's not necessarily about arrogance, but, you know, we we know Will Smith and have seen his work, you know, we understand and can see now that, you know, who he is in front and behind the camera. Um, it's a lot about his work ethic and who he is and who what he believes that has him create such incredible things. And so I, I certainly wasn't offended by any of it, you know, and it didn't make me uncomfortable. I know it was more okay. so a call out for other men, but I, I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate what you shared. I didn't see the entire thing, but is this the same one that you said? I, I made notes that um, he does the work on himself to be better. So that means he is better than the people who don't do any. Is that the same guy we're talking about? This is this is the same guy. So for our audience that are watching, let's go ahead and run the clip real quick Please. so they can get on the same page. Yes, I definitely appreciated all his energy, and I knew I would when I saw him on Twitter. I was like, mm, got to get this guy on. And this is this is something I don't like about our culture where we do this whole like fake humility thing. Well, I ain't no better than the next man. I am. I am better, okay? We might not, we've already been born the same, but I made myself better than you. And I'm at like it, you know? And so for some of y'all that's watching this, look, I am not like you, okay? My life is different than yours. And so, and your life is different than mine because the decisions we made. But I am better than somebody. And I'm at like it. And so that's... I mean... <laughs> Rhonda's like, ooh. So I know cute. you guys are on his side. I know you guys are on his side, but I mean, it was going in and out, but I did, you did confirm that he said he's better than other people. So the only thing I had a problem with, I said, was the fact that when someone says that they're better than, so, than anyone else, I think he, he was saying that he was doing wait, himself to be better. So that means he's better than the people who don't do any work on themselves. Correct? Correct. Isn't that a little too arrogant? Um, because I feel that you are not competing with anyone else. So if you feel that you are better than someone else, that is showing me there's this little superiority, inferiority thing. I don't know. I don't know him that well, but I, it kind of touched me in a different way. I'm like, it's okay to be, to be um, confident. But to start to compare yourself is where you get in trouble. I think you get in harm's way because then you're always being validated by your success is only determined by if you can beat out this person or if you're better than this person when you should be competing with yourself. So that is the only thing that I was like, Lyria, like the idea of competing with someone. This isn't a race. I get it if it was a race, you're trying to beat someone's time, but Competing with someone, is that what, you, I mean, you ladies feel like that's okay? Like to say I'm better than someone else? Just curious. Go ahead, Key. I, was, I guess when I, cause I listened to it and taken it in the context of how he was actually saying, at least the way that I heard it, was that it, it was about who he is and how he's, you know, rebuilt himself and he, cause he definitely has had some failures in his life that he, you know, explained at one point. So he recognizes that, you know, he's definitely not the type of person that basically stayed in that lower level of decision-making, the lower level of just accepting what is, the lower level of not, you know, having experiences in, in, in basically implementing discipline to actually get to the next level so that he is, you know, growing. So the way that I heard it, it definitely had an arrogant tone, but because it's, you know, there was so much of his own self-awareness that he had that I, it, to me, it didn't, it wasn't offensive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. and, and again, that could just be me because, you know, I, 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 was trying to listen to like, okay, what does he have to say? Because of course, yeah, the clip for sure is just kind of like, but you know, I can appreciate that 
he was basically calling it out there of like, look, we have to raise the standard. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, and there's a lot of people it. where the standard is just very low and they will just accept the bare minimum and opportunity in the community, you know, will basically just not, at least especially amongst a lot of men, men aren't necessarily called out for basically just not going out and getting it and not necessarily just the accumulation of things, but even just a better mindset, discipline, again, like better decisions and making those decisions early. So that true. was, that I, I was agree with I, that part. What I got from it. That was, yeah, that we was, have, that was terrific. Yeah, no, very well said. And I love both points of view. I want to go to the chat really quick. Sunny Rose said, I took it as he, I took it that he was saying I'm better than slackers. And, you know, I have to agree. I kind of got that too. Cause you know, I don't really, I used to be a rapper. Y'all, I write lyrics, I do whatever. But when I write, okay, when Miss Exclusive is out, I'm like, I'm talking all that smack because I do work right. for myself. And I am right. into, I mean, I really, I put in the work. So, right. but then there's also that part of me who's very, y'all know me, I'm Miss Chop It Up Sundays. I'm very like, everybody and, mm, and mm. so I understand <laughs> the thing, but I did take it too, as he was saying, you know, because somebody challenged me in Facebook. They, were, they, they gave me something else to read. And they're like, everybody's the same. Everybody's important. And the way I took it is, of course, everybody's important. Where This whole one microcosm doesn't work with everybody in it. You know, if you're a healer and somebody needs to be healed, just because you have those skills in this area, you still need the person who needs your service or healing to be relevant. I feel like that's how it balances out. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, the analogy I shared with the guy on Facebook was kind of like, well, I mean, if a doctor is an expert, wouldn't you prefer that the expert work on you versus somebody who doesn't have the education? He's just better. It is what it is. I mean, Jesus himself was just better. He calibrated at a higher level of consciousness. Is, can that be okay? I mean, he did, but he... <laughs> He, it just right. it kind of is what it is. Right. And I get that. But to your point, that's his job. You're talking about a field. So I was saying, I get what you're saying. I'm talking right. about com competing, saying you're better than, than, okay, I got it. You're saying slackers. But who's to say the level of happiness of him or the success of the teacher or the man who runs a food, you know, truck? Is he a slacker? Just talking, just expanding the conversation. The conversation. I'm not saying that I don't agree with you. No, because I'm I just get what wondering. You're just wondering I mean, is the it's a thin right. line, is what I'm trying to say. We have to be careful with competing and saying you're better than someone, because somewhere in there, sometimes you're. you're it's a defense mechanism too, and mm. you're, you're 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 hiding something or you're shielding. Or you're protecting something else maybe that you're not, you know, so happy with. So I'm just saying it's, it may not be right. for him, but I'm very careful with saying I'm better than the slackers. Because what's the level? His version of a slacker may be different. That's all I'm saying. That's you know all what I'm saying. You, like, it's, a, you have, it's a good point. Um, and it is a thin line. So in the chat it's real a quick. thin line. Thin line. Sunny Rose said, and we can be so nice that we don't call a spade a spade. And that kind of takes me to my true. next question True, is true. as women, Sunny do Rose. we have the audacity to, you know, as women, do we have the audacity to get out there and say things like this? And, um, you know, do you think we as women shrink ourselves in the name of fake humility so that we're not offending people? And so that we're not, you know, what do you think about us? We're all Beyonce, like, Beyonce, yeah. I use Beyonce's thing because she will say it. Nobody's going to argue her. No. mad because I'm so fresh, fresher than you. She means that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Kind of yes. just is what it is on her. You know, so what do you feel about how um, do we as women collectively have the audacity to be like, pop, pop, pop? I think that it. we we should have the audacity, but we're not raised or socialized to actually exercise in that way. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like we're always we're the ones who are socialized to be soft and the acceptable ones and the being his piece. And so if we put it out there, like, bah, 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 you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm better know? than you. Yeah, it's like, I'm better than you, you know, and then we, we tend to, 
<laughs> and then like the way that I said it, it's like, I'm better than you. You know, like it just has a little- It has a little, little, little yeah. it, and comes, of course, it comes with the neck roll and the attitude though. That's the yeah. I'm talking about. But we can't, yeah. but, you, but can, it can also be real silent though. Because it, it is can. a posture. Yes. You know, yes. a posture. It absolutely it is a posture, posture now. And but I do agree. Yeah. I do agree that so, we do. Um, you know. Especially as black women, I'm too, we kind of mm -hmm. now, because we have the bad reputation of being the angry black women or woman or such, such and such, sometimes it's hard to even want to speak out because then you're like, oh, who do you think you are? You just trying, you have attitude, mm -hmm. you think you're this. So it does come along with that. And, I, and, and I, I'm challenging it only because I like the, the different point of views. And I'm thinking my theme is that thin line, you know what I mean? Because you're right, both of you are right. We weren't raised that way. We were supposed to be quiet and, and be ladylike. And, and, you know, but we're different now. We're a different breed and a different generation. So, and then some of us have taken it too far you know what I mean? But we don't do it. Uh, we, I'm saying we are different. I, I mean, all of us are very much independent women. So I'm, I'm with you on that. But I'm going to push that thin line just for conversation um, because <laughs> but it's good to hear. And Sunny Rose, too. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's true. We aren't raised. Like, I think we should do more, but just not cross that line. You know, and it, it, comes, it becomes too much of a bad attitude, I should say. And when it comes to even just our standards as it relates to dating, you know, like don't let us have too many, you know, to higher standards because then it's like, oh, you know, she's a gold digger. Oh, she's too exactly. difficult. She's wanting too much, you know, and I think that that also is the audacity that we should have to basically not accept you know, this uh, just basically accepting anything or entertaining the, entertaining the dude who is a slacker because they're just oh, yeah. used to not having anyone challenge them or even challenge them to raise up to their own king level, I guess, you know, if, yes. if, if you will. So, yeah. yeah, we should have that audacity. Is it in That's us a good naturally point. to be that? I think I'm it sorry. is naturally in us because we... I think it's taught out of us because, for example, when I was seven years old and they had those little things that you felt, I posted this before, but then they were like, oh, what do you want to be? And then leave a blank. I put boss of the universe. OK. And I was seven, <laughs> not a doctor, not a lawyer. I was like the whole the whole thing. The okay. whole thing. So I think we do naturally have that. But um sometimes society and outside forces and things like diminish the value of our voice and what we think our worth should be because it keeps you in line. They need to be able to sell mm -hmm. you things. They need to be able to, True. you know, keep some kind of a docile, you know, nature. Real quick in the chat here, Black Women Speak says, we must learn how to acknowledge our own greatness. Um, yes. She said, my sister is teaching me this. When someone gives me a compliment, simply say thank you, full stop. Don't nice. try to make your accomplishments small to fit the narrative of those who have their own self-esteem issues. You better Amen. preach. Amen. You better bring it. Yes. Absolutely. And that is so agree. real. I love it. That was and so Rhonda, real. I do agree with you too, how you said we are different. And you too, Keandra, you said how there's an expectation for the way we carry ourselves. But I think um, in that we can still find our own ways and flavor to exude that confidence or hold what it is and still, because you can say no thank you in a way that shuts it all down. It'll be, <laughs> gotta be too much moving. Yeah. You saw Claire Huxtable, she could just give you a little. <laughs> she gave you that look. She was like, one little you. look. And we're and stopping, right? Her, her you know? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I definitely agree. Or well, she'll um, do that. Mm. Soul Warrior Sirius said, what's the incentive for a man to be a man these days? And you know what? That's interesting mm. because that's something mm. that Stephen actually put in. Wow. He addressed. Um, and, he, and he actually said, I mean, if you're basically if you're a heterosexual male and you just don't get married and you're like 50, like that's weird. It's weird, bro. That's what that was his words. Mm. So, yeah, he was basically saying, if you're not aspir aspiring to this, this is what we do. This is the country we're in. This is how you're notable. This is how you move forward as a man. This is how you gain respect. This is how you find purpose in being the person who takes care of your family. Just the innate man things. Mm -hmm. um, it, if it's not apparent to you what's the incentive to you, that kind of speaks to something that I, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I wouldn't know what to tell somebody because it just seems so natural for me. Yeah. The I'm incentive the for the friend. man, she was saying. For the, the man to be a man. 
yeah, to live your best life. I mean, that's really yeah. for you at the for it's really for the man at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, he's yeah, got to want to live his best life for himself. Right. So that would be an incentive, right? His, ha <laughs> his happiness, his goals. I mean, in the end, we all want, I mean, in the end, we still want love too. Absolutely. We, yeah. I mean, so hopefully, mm -hmm. otherwise he's going to be, you know, you're going to be miserable. So what's his incentive? I don't know. Is he, I mean, for some, it's, it's religious too. Yeah, I mean, well, how about the love? That that in and of itself should be enough. Our chats, our comments are blowing up. Let me breeze through these. Really Sunny Rose said, "I think certain tribes and groups are taught false humility." And yes, Keandra, that though the mm. audacity to want our list of attributes, our higher standards are often questioned and condemned. Like, how dare you? And there's, yes. a, you know, <laughs> um, so there's stuff in there like that. But no, that's very true, and it's something to consider. So the ladies watching, I mean, if you need to. You got your own, but for the sake of the, the get your inner Beyonce out. You have your own you. You're really you. You don't need her, but you get what I'm saying when I say that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Go ahead, whatever. <laughs> I love it. So the second question I had on this topic, well, which is kind of already answered in itself, is like, do you think this is divisive or does he, at the end of the day, have a point? Yeah, we kind of answered that. Yeah, yeah. And it, is it the point of him being basically clear of like him being better and, and owning it? It can be divisive for sure. And yeah, it, it, yeah I, th I think we definitely touched on that and Rhonda's brought we up did. a really good point. And <laughs> I yeah, love it. it. It can be a thin line for sure, for sure. That's what I'm, I'm always, that's what I'm concerned with, that. In line. I mean, I'm for, I'm all for it. Like we said, we're a powerful, independent woman. But in the end, we want love. And as women, as Black women too, a women of color, it's it's a, a challenge. Like you said, to just have that audacity to speak what we want or to denounce what we don't want. So well, it's time to get into this. This is this is Queen's Glean, and just like we hear the men, the women got to be heard too. And there's yes. a lot that goes to a standing. You know, in the and the fullness of who we are. And I think we're getting there. So let's yes. go to our second topic. Um, oh, well, there is a question in the chat. It says, what is a man in his essence? Please don't give me a physical component. Give me what he is at his essence. Mm. Mm. You know, at, at his essence, is it the some of just those you know innate things? Is it the provider? Is it the supporter to the the feminine you know aspect of of what we bring as women? Um, yeah, and it, I guess some of that is a little bit hard because it's like I'm not a man, right? That you know what I mean. So it's like I I guess the only areas where I could answer that is from a space of what is complementary to what I bring and who I am as a, a woman. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that would make yeah. like a little bit of thought for me to. Yeah, because the essence of it kind of sounds like an energy of it, which is gonna yeah. hit different women different ways. But mm -hmm. I think as we go along in this conversation and play more of Steven's clips, it'll start to come out in, from the voice of a man. So this um, second clip is, he was talking about how his confidence comes from lack of self-neglect. He gave the example of being able to realize when he's on social media, looking at women too much, and um, it made him realize that he needed to step up his game, his cologne uh, collection, clothes, and get out and meet actual women because he was neglecting the part of himself that needed that real connection and trying to make it quick and easy microwave style with social media. So let's see what he has to say in this second clip here. This confidence that I have comes from lack of self-neglect, okay? So... That's why I feel this way. And, and, and anything I'm saying to you guys, and you feel in your heart that you might you feel like I'm offending you in some kind of way, it's because you are neglecting a part of you, okay? There's a part of you that you know you need to work on, and you're avoiding it. And so instead of facing it and, and, and dealing with it, you feel offended by what I'm telling you right now. He be stepping on toes. Man, <laughs> he, is, he, he is bringing it. <laughs> Listen. I love it. <laughs> so with that being said, I really, I Woo! love the energy. I cannot Woo! lie. Um, 
So my question to this is how important <laughs> is it for you to observe your behavior <laughs> in an effort to take inventory of what action should stay and what action should go? I think it's super important. I mean, you know, I've I've been a, a lover, a student of all things self-care, soul care, healing, and not necessarily doing it in a because it's only beneficial to me, but understanding like when I am healed, that it legit ripples out and touches everyone that I come into contact with. And so my well-being is not just something that benefits just me. It it's it's a thing that that basically can be felt collectively. And so when there is something that distracts us enough to where it either, you know, has our attention and it's, we're basically using the thing that we're distracted from to not pay attention to whatever it is that is calling us to pay attention to, you know, then that, that is neglecting yourself. It's, it's, I mean, people even do it when they're work, being workaholics, you know, like it can be, you can see it in a lot of different areas where it's like you basically are trying to avoid something within yourself or something that's going exactly. on in the whole world. Exactly. Like calling for your attention and you allow yourself to be distracted. Um, and so essentially that's neglecting yourself. So I agree. I, I, liked his, I liked his wording of that in a different way yes. to explain the importance of, of self-care. And it was going in and out, so I'm going to ask this. Was he specifically talking about social online? Was he saying that's what he had to get off of social media and get out into the real world and meet people? Did he say so something that was, like that? So that was an example that he gave, but just in the clip oh, he was okay. saying, basically, if anybody was offended by him saying that, oh, I'm better than you because I work harder on myself, he said that that was basically an indicator to let you know you know that there's a place you're you're neglecting yourself. So he's say, and then he went on to share Ooh. that I found out I was neglecting myself when I was participating in this behavior of looking That's at women too much, and that was my signal and my red flag. Like, hey, this sound, this feels like a lack of this is you know I don't want to have any lack of self neglect. Let me focus on this and figure out why I'm doing this. So. And yes, he did go on a fast as well, where he tuned out music, television, and social media and ended up getting ahead in all these things. So basically, like he said, he's doing the work to identify what issues are hindering him from being his best self, his highest self, and then getting to work and making the sacrifices to eradicate them. I agree with that part when he was, I mean, I applaud him for that, like getting off, you know, um, and, 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 I guess in the case of social media, what I've found, because um, I, I shut it off uh, one time for like 30 days, because I feel that when we wake up, we got to take, wait, first of all, we got to take our power back. I'm sorry, social media, we're, we're addicted to it. I mean, a lot of us. Um, um, but when you wake up in the morning, if you're the one that, that logs on, you are no longer in charge. Let me tell you why. You are reactive. You are not proactive. So the minute you log on, you are in someone else's world. Now you're reacting and they're showing you how to behave. Now you're stressed or you wanna live up to this. So you are no longer in power. So I agree with him. You do have to, and especially just take back your mornings. Start off, I always tell my friends, when I did that for 30 days, it helped me out because waking up, not, I mean, not logging on, I felt so much more in control of my decisions and prioritizing. And because we do give away, we are distracted, like you said, we, we, we are distracted easily. So it's like, that was one little change. I said in the morning, it's mine. Before I even log on to anything, emails, and it's what about, what do I want out of the world today? What do I want to give the world today? What do I want to do? What do I want to achieve? You know, who do I want to take care of? Who do I, I mean, and like we said, self-neglect is, is of course, uh, is apparent, but I do, I do like that about what he did. And, and, and um, I heard a little bit in him because he was saying to the people, if you don't like that, then there's something in you that, and that, that they didn't like, or they're neglecting or they're whatever. Um, and I'm like, hmm, is that where you started? Cause I kind of felt that way about his little attitude. You know, like I said, I'm for it. <laughs> I'm for it. I'm all for it. I mean, um, I'm all for the confidence. But like I said, yes, 
we have to take back our power. And I, I would love to offer that to everyone in the morning. Please, before you log on, log on to yourself. Give yourself love. You know, what I mean? because we, the, the, the world will take care of the rest. And one thing I found out is sometimes you are um, thinking you are cheating so much because, but you are distracted. You are doing for others way more. You know, as women, we do that. We, we provide for others. You know what I mean? So yeah. definitely take time for yourself. Don't neglect yourself. You know, start off with self-care. Yeah, no, I completely agree with everything you said. And when you were speaking, what I thought about is I had to mention when I was talking to this man that I'm a daughter of a military man. My dad had three girls, no boys, but I'm pretty sure when we, you know, when we got in trouble, it was go run the stairs, do some push-ups, do. So it was very <laughs> that. It was like no nonsense up in here. So I kind of did grow up with what you were saying about Steven, maybe him saying that those out there that are offended by what he said, maybe it's something in you feeling not the same way about him. Like I welcome that idea of that mirror reflection because it's true. And that's it how somebody true. like me sees something. And I that's do want to see the holes in me reflected back to me, even if I got to eat it because I'm about this self mastery life. So I do want to yes. elevate and evolve and allow those little hot moments to sting. Like, did you just, okay, <laughs> well, then I get, I'm gonna get up one more. I'm one, 1% 1 better, one degree in the right, more right direction. I'm happy to take on that challenge. Like I welcome it, like, let's go. So I guess too, from, it depends the language and you know, men and women. I love listening From strangers? To... No, okay, not necessarily. I mean, of course you want it to be constructive or from okay. a loving place. You just don't want people crapping on you and whatever, but just overall, I get excited about welcoming the opportunity to level up, really, to even, level, right, you know. Right. So I guess if I see something in me and it's an issue, okay, I'll take it with as right. much grace as possible, and then I'll get to the work in a minute, you know? So <laughs> I just thought about that when you were saying, let me go to the chat real quick, because there's so much going on. Okay, Soul Warrior Sirius said, the Holy Trinity is mother, father, and child. Once we uplift and build back up the family constructs and the dynamic of having healthily, healthy families, we will mm. see the true healing of a nation. Mm. And I agree. That's yes. kind of like the whole point of these conversations, to be honest, to harmonize yeah. these relationships. Yeah. Um, what do you, Keandra, let, let me get your take on that one, because I know we spoke about that in another episode. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, you know, a lot of us, we learn by what's, well, not a lot of us, all of us to some, a certain extent learn by what's modeled. And so if we're not experiencing, you know, for those of us who may have grown up in like a single family home where we're not even experiencing a man, you know, the presence of them um, or vice versa, where they're not necessarily um, able to see like a woman in her feminine essence or a man in his man essence, you know, then we basically can get out in the world and have completely different expectations um, or really not have the right type of expectations when we actually need to be adults or you know, when it's time for us to actually stand, into, stand in our maturity um, and when we need to be responsible for our actions. And so um, I thoroughly agree with that. Um, I know the part of it where um, it's really interesting is because you know, we now identify and define families in a very different way than we may have mm. you know years ago it's not necessarily so just a nuclear unit of just the mom the dad and the kids you know there's blended families you know there are you know same sex couples who are adopting children there are um, you know, grandparents and uncles and aunts and godparents who are raising kids. So, you know, there's these, you know, communities of aunties who've come together to just, you know, support their other That's single true. mom girlfriends, you know, so just family is, it's a really, um, it's a little bit broader than I think that the way that, you know, we we basically have identified with it. And I'm honestly okay with it because that's, you know, the blended family and having lots of different dynamics and different, you know, extended family members, that's all that I know. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, but, you know, it does come with its challenges as you kind of sure. go out in the world and you decide what type of family unit that you want for yourself. Right, yes. and that's why I said you have to look inward. Definitely, everything yeah. is inward. Yeah, 
you know, but like you said, we wait for everyone to define us. I mean, we often um, look to people to define our family unit. And I love what you said, that hit me, because who are we to tell this type of family that they don't deserve love and they don't deserve that, that to, you know, to show love or to receive love? Who are we to say that if the structure isn't what we're used to, our original ideas and concepts? So that's that was a good point that hit me. Yeah, I love that. And you know, in the chat, long time, hmm, long time resident ninety nine <laughs> says, "Yes, um, family is an ever changing definition, and marriage is not easy at all." Yeah, I mean, mm. I definitely can't speak on marriage. I've never been married, but I can only imagine because me managing myself, and at one time I even <laughs> had a fish, and I was just like. <laughs> Well, this is nuts. So I'm not going to argue that at all. <laughs> I'm just having fun with y'all. Um, no, but really, it is definitely. Stephen had the same thing. He was raised in a family, you know, and we were both raised in the same kind of nuclear family. Mom, dad, sisters, and it was what it was. But yes, it, it however you get it, how you live it, the whole point and purpose is to have that foundation, to have that unbreakable, unconditional love. Like my family is my family no matter what. And the way we ride for each other is like, it, it just, it's instinctual, it's automatic. And, you know, for me as a military child, we moved around like this. So it was just five of us. And I know that having that foundation and me moving around to I was able to move around the world and live as a military brat because I had my foundation, my family. At the end of the day, I was only so shaken because I could always go home. So mm -hmm. people need to be able to go home, you know? So yes. that's home to some aunties, or you know? And that is, even that mm. just makes me feel warm. You gotta be able yes. to go home. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, what, that's, that, what did I say? It's about the love, no matter mm -hmm. what. You know, you can't put the gender, the color. It's about the love. You know what okay. I mean? Because love is a frequency. Yeah, That's you can't what it have is. that. Yeah. You can't just stop it right there. Like, <laughs> oh no, mom, dad, the traditional. You know, no, it's love. There's no room. Correct. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we gotta remember that. If we do that, we can simplify everything. We wouldn't have so many problems that we're having now. You know? We yeah. Have so many. So that's that, that's so true. Yeah, I love it. Okay, I didn't know if you had something. I was like, and go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking in the I chat. I know, we're like taking it in. We're taking it all, all the chat room, taking it all in. I love it. I know, I love it. Soul Warrior Serious. Um, Bullet Scotty shared our content, and he's always in here supporting, so thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Don't build, ladies. Well wishes and prosperity to you all. So thank you, Soul Warrior Serious. Um, Sunny Rose, said, that's good. a good point. Yes. Um, that's a good point, Keandra. Blended families are a part of the current paradigm. Keandra always brings that wider perspective. Oh, thanks. Always, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Yes, and Black women speak. Love can come in traditional form as well. Um, and then Sunny, yes. at the end of, at, at the base, beyond gender traditions, it's looking for love, getting love. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Completely agree with that. I love it. So let's They're see. Good. I know. I was like, oh, I had questions and everything. I got lost for a second. Um, <laughs> so this was good. I feel like we covered that so well. And I think um, with every discussion and every connection, we find a better way to not only love ourselves, but that's a reflection of how we love other people. So that's really what this is about. And when I speak about yeah. this or these platforms with King Speak and Queens Glean, it's really so that... Um, we can work on ourselves because it's we're the root of everything. Everything is coming through us. This experience mm. is coming through us. So I may not have 30 years of marriage under my belt, but I do know how to speak my words, tell you about my emotions, wrangle my stuff, clean it up, did it, all the things that you need to do to be able to maneuver to continue to evolve so you can have healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Hawea says, peace and much respect, soul. Um, I heard you and Young on TV today dropping jewels. Okay, you was on TV, serious? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, 
All right. So we have another clip from our um, king, our Tuesday king, from the Built Different episode, Stephen Story. So in this clip, he shares a little bit about how our minds deceive us. And this was actually, I think this might have been one of the first times I heard it explained this way. So mm. let me pull it up and let's listen in. 99% of your mind is slanted to be negative. And it is loud. Okay. But the 1%, which is you, you have to be constantly talking to your 99% to say, hey, look, this is not a life or death risk, risk I'm taking. I'm just trying to be better as a person. So here he was talking about survival mode. Um, so he was basically saying 99% of our brains are slanted to be negative, and it's the 1% in us, our soul, our usness. Um, that's responsible for, for keeping that up. What did you guys think about that concept? He reads a lot, so I don't know where the um, source is from, but. I definitely was like, damn, is it really 99%? That's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. lot. That's a lot. I gotta check that out. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, so uh, I didn't have a chance. Yeah, what do you think? I, no, I, um, I agree with what he was, it was the percentage of it where it was like, wow, is it really that much? But I definitely agree that there's a large part of just the way that we're built. We're built for survival. And so a lot of the things that are instinctual sometimes can hurt us because we are always thinking of how can we keep ourselves comfortable. And oftentimes that then leads to us making decisions to where we're not really experiencing life or we'll, you know, even shut ourselves off from like, you know, receiving and feeling love because we've had been hurt before. So that instinctual part of us is like closing ourselves up to certain things. And so it's the 1%, you know, if that's what it is, that 1% of us that has to actually give ourselves the opportunity or even the willpower to, to make a different decision and do something different. So um, again, the percentages, like it's if that's really how high it is, like that's mind blowing, but I totally, you know, agree with there's a part of us that is, you know, where we have to basically sometimes go against some of those primal instincts, you know, with us that can sometimes keep us in this comfort zone um, that really doesn't serve us in certain areas of life. Mm, I definitely want to look that up. <laughs> I want to check that out. Yeah, because what I started thinking when he said that is like whether uh, whether the percent percentage is higher or not, I started thinking about why we need daily bread. Because I do know I could read something, digest it, but if too long goes by, and I'm not eating on some soul food, something to evolve me, then I'm losing it. You know, I'm, I got some reserves on me, but I also do feel like I kind of need to prop up my life with just a whole little 1% of something. If I could just dive in a little bit on something to just keep my brain from falling all the way over while life is coming at me, you know, even like you said, Rhonda, taking back my mornings and really getting yeah. rooted in those. So that way I'm not swaying all over the place. Maybe that is the one percent, or however maybe. the low percent. You know, maybe that's it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. that is. I agree. Yeah, but you I love that. Take, yeah, that's interesting. I'm gonna look yeah. more into that. Yeah, no, it's worth looking into. Now, let's see. Black, I have a question for us, but before that, in the chat, Black Women Speak said, "If you considered when you were a child, your thoughts were different. You asked why." You felt true happiness. There was nothing you couldn't do until someone told you so. Um, mm -hmm. And that's very true. Yeah. The I agree with that. Experiences. Put that way, I agree with that because um, I was having that discussion with a friend of mine. I mean, we are, I mean, think about it since, like she said, I mean, one year old, two years old, we are programmed. I mean, when we watch cartoons, we're programmed. We're watching it, but they're telling us what to like, what cereal to eat, what to wear, what's hot, what's not. And we're still doing it on the feeds and the social media. We're still struggling with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's nonstop. <laughs> it, is, it is a challenge. It's like that 1% or whatever percentage it is. You know, you, you have to find it. That, Like they said, an, an ounce of faith. And I, I mean, you have to find it. You have mm -hmm. to find the strength. And you have to go back to what? That's what affirmations do. I mean, you know, they, they put us right back on track. That's, you know, right. and, and for some, that's what prayer does. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many, you know. Or a combination so, of both. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, a little bit more yeah. stuff on there. Yeah. A little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. Exactly. So this, 
So this leads me to ask this question. Um, if that's the case, do you think when it comes to seasons of singleness that women, um, that as women, we are signaling the body that we're in survival mode? If 99% of our brain or a big majority portion of our brain is linked towards keeping ourselves safe and survival mode and protecting ourselves and that's our primal nature, then is it safe to say that as women, in, when we're in that season of singleness, if our minds aren't right about it, that we're signaling the body that we're in survival mode? Maybe. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, that's a hard one because I'm going to say, I guess it depends on which, which, what woman you're asking. Um, or we, I'm okay. sure we've all experienced that or some, of, some version of it. Um, so let's say this. Well, when you say survival mode, are we shying away from love? I mean, what do you mean in the dating, on the dating scene? What, what exactly are you asking? Like, so I definitely think, okay, so if we're find, finding it a primal nature to be with a man and find a mate and be protected and provided for in these things, and it's not happening, if we're not doing the 1% it takes to keep our minds from going all the way to the left, if our minds go all the way to the left in that survival mode, then I guess that would indicate to me that you're walking around in survival mode, almost always triggerable. Sometimes I wonder if some of the dis-ease that shows up in our body is because of a fear of not being able to have a family or who's looking at me, what's going on, or this man and this, and just that constant state of survival mode makes you feel like okay. you're prey. Yeah. So if you're walking around feeling like okay. prey, but you have an innate desire to love and have a family and be a mother, I guess my question was just in prolonged seasons of singleness, like, are there things we're doing vibrationally that are sending out um, a survival mode message as opposed to something different? I think for sure there is, because when I think about my seasons of single, because I've had a couple seasons of singleness, they were different for like, they, they were for different reasons. One was because you know, I just knew that I needed to stop the serial monogamy and focus on different things. And then another time it came after heartbreak. And so mm. the singleness after heartbreak is when I was basically putting out the vibration of like, don't even step to me because I'm going to either say something. I'm going to rip your head off. Yeah, I'm going to rip your head off. I'm not <laughs> smiling. I'm not li like, I'm not giggling. I'm not like none of those things. I, and so I, I'm giving it off because Definitely, I'm right. in a place of being hurt and bitter and jaded. And so um, I think it, it, it can definitely depend on where a woman is, I guess, on the spectrum of her singleness. Um, mm -hmm. I did in in the chat where someone said like singleness by choice and you know again like it can be for different reasons some people might need to just take a moment where they just don't want to be in a relationship at a particular time because their focus is maybe on traveling or you know building a business or something you know else um, but then there's other times when um you know, you're like what Jamie was speaking to, where it's like there's that part of you that really wants to be in a relationship, but because of your fear, you're unconsciously putting out this repellent, you know, to where like you're not even open, really, you know what I'm saying, to dating. To you're receive. Just, exactly. You're really not open to receive anything. You're just kind of, you're repelling without even being aware of it. Um even though you say that your desire is to be in a relationship. And I've been there too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and Keandra, quick question though. But is, is that a stage that's necessary also? Which part, the stage of um, being single just like, in general? And like, yeah, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want, don't talk to me. Is that, is that stage necessary? You know, to get to the other side, or do you just open yourself every single time? Like, okay, I'm done. I'm out of relationship. I, I think mean that there, there is a place where it can serve us. It can serve the wholeness because, again, like if I know when I was jumping from relationship to relationship, a part of it was a distraction, you know, and and it was kind of keeping me unfocused. And I was, you know, doing it for real surface reasons. But exactly once I, right. I decided to start dating for marriage then 
the change, decision right? made, even just the type of date nonsense that I was willing to put up with change. So it was like, I'm cool. I'm good with just doing me because <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your energy changed up. Yeah. This is too much. <laughs> what about you, Jamie? <laughs> um, I definitely, I, I almost forgot what you asked. Is it necessary to go through that phase? Because it's not, I mean, um, you know, the stage of, I guess, Kendra was saying oh. that, you know, mm -hmm. a kind of putting that block up or that, that fence up, that wall up or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Is it necessary for us to heal? I mean, I think it's the indicator that you need to heal because <laughs> it's like, yeah. if you're that tight, then <laughs> it's just that time to just go on and <laughs> have some little mirror time. And, and it Please is clean challenging. Out the house clean out the house and it's challenging to clean the house when there's a bunch of people running around. So you've got to clean out the people. Not get, the you know, dust. That's what I'm saying. And then, you know, <laughs> I take when Keandra says married for dating, if we keep the analogy of cleaning the house, it's like, all right, I'm going to clean up the house. Everybody right. out. I'm going to clean up the house. Now I got my white rug, my white couches, all my white furniture and everything exactly. is all together. So I won't think twice Ooh, before alignment. whoever's coming in, your little shoes better be clean. Where was you sitting before? Like, I need right. you to, this is all white everything. Okay. I need it. So, I need everything else to go. <laughs> yeah. I got so I do. I got, I got company coming. Right. I think it's a very wise idea to take the moment when you need it. Um, especially if you're feeling that way. That feeling is an indicator that you've got something to heal. The don't have a lack of self-neglect, just like what Steven says. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly what Stephen says there. That is the time for yourself. And that's yeah. very necessary. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one question I had here, and I had something in mind. Um, what do you think are some of the attributes of a woman that's in survival mode? Oof. I think we just spoke to it a little bit. <laughs> there, there can be, you know, a, a certain hardness. Um, a hardness. Yes. Like it's, it's, yeah, like a hardness in, um, her disposition, um, yes. almost like a, like an emptiness, you know, yeah. um, and then almost being too, it's one thing to be focus is, is great, but like hyper focused and hyper, mm. like when it's in this hyper productivity type of a place, I think sometimes that can be an indicator too, because again, it's like, Basically, what is it, mm -hmm. a distraction and what you're doing to basically serve or try to feel this validation that's within you that's not being met in some other area. So mm -hmm. those are definitely, I feel like some some things of of a woman that might be, you know, just just out here just surviving. Yeah, yeah. I was going to mention that hyperactivity. It's kind of what I was thinking, and it's like. I, you know, I mentioned that because all of that stuff is so opposite of who we are, even speaking to hyperactivity. If we're women and there are ways to rest and we're supposed to be receiving and all of this stuff. But that sounds so opposite. It just kind of made me think of all of the ways that we step out of our divine feminine when we're surviving. And, you know, that, too, can be a little m repellent when we're trying to do all of the yeah. other innate things. Now it's like, we've got this distraction of this chaotic energy, this lack of joy, this distracted mindset, this survival mode that is just, you know, repelling the exact thing that we want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's go to our next subject. We have another clip from Steven. So we were talking here about the, uh, the power of fasting. Um, and then he talked a little bit about being overstimulated and, I will let you guys listen to what he had to say. Mm, mm, mm. Not only is fasting a spiritual thing, but like, guys, you're not meant to be this stimulated. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like, in real life, like, throughout human history, you're not meant to be stimulated as much as we currently are. Whether it's through the lights, the sounds, the foods we eat. Uh, sexual stimuli, we should not be stimulated as much as we are. And so, uh, mm. I definitely agreed with him there. Actually, when he said it, I felt like I was like, oh my God, turn off the lights. Let me get off my phone. 
<laughs> Shut this down. We're in him now. <laughs> There's a time oh and a place. Gosh. Start your morning. Right. That's all I'm saying. Get your mornings back. There you go. Find that. I'm telling you, that's that's the theme. Yeah. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree with what he said as well. Um, there is something to be said about how much we're being stimulated. I'm totally with you, Rhonda, on the, the mornings. Like, I actually, like, purposely do not have an alarm set on my phone most times because I don't even want to grab it. I don't want a reason to have to start scrolling and just that part of me that already is programmed. Yeah. Email, it's an you know, that stuff. But when he was talking about, um, especially being sexually stimulated, I thought that was actually very, insightful as it relates to a lot of younger boys. There was um, an article that I read and I don't remember, but it was a while ago of how a lot of, you know, younger adolescent boys, the more that they watch porn, the basically it, the harder it is for them to be able to have natural sex with a woman because their expectations, their stimulation, their ability to actually even stay erect, like all those exactly. things are affected all because of watching too much porn. And it's like, wow, like, I mean, even like for us, I know it's like so much more accessible than, you know, the little videotapes and stuff that, you know, we would have to. <laughs> Not the video <laughs> Like, did, did we put our data? But no, seriously, like, it's it's so much easier now for just those things that overstimulate us for just the access. I agree. I agree. Mm. I, so, to I totally agree. And it kind of, uh, do you feel that it, it, it also disturbs or disrupts relationships? I mean, you know, expectations. I mean, like he said, the stimulation yeah. that you see on our feeds online. I mean, I knew a girl and she went, I was working an event like years ago and she was crying and I was asking her, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she was like, I just don't know what to do. My boyfriend keeps comparing me to women on, on Instagram. You know, why can't I do this more? You know, that's what he wants. You know what I mean? Um, because we're definitely overstimulated on Instagram, but also in our music industry. I mean, who, who are the hot topics? Cardi B, I mean, Megan and all of these women, they're half naked. I mean, the competition is steep. It's like, if you don't take your clothes <laughs> off and <laughs> like- And I mean, it's so funny too, cause it's not just they're half naked, they're wearing leopard print and lace. You're seeing nipples and shoulders <laughs> and rooms and tigers and like, I am just like- <gasps> In 1990s prom buns, prom buns in the 90s. Like I don't know what's going on at this point. Exactly. What are you, how do you keep up? <laughs> oh my god. So I definitely think. And then Black Women Speak in the chat says sometimes it's a sign of running away from who you are. Absolutely. When we want to drown in a distraction, there's something that we're not willing to face. That almost goes back to the. Uh, what I, yeah, boom. yeah, and exactly, and what you're saying about giving yourself that time so you Rob, can get I'm in. Curious, how old? Wait, who was it that was just telling the story of um how they're basically? Oh yeah, your coworker, how she was basically being compared to the Instagram models. I'm curious how old she was or how old her man um, was. They were, um, I think she was about tw late twenties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think there's too. a? Yeah. Yeah. I I think that there is, uh, and An you age. know, not, there's there's something about the age where it's like I can't, and I don't know if it's because you know, again, we grew up in the era where there wasn't social media to where there is now, so we can distinguish between the two. Mm -hmm. um, versus when you know this is all that you've had and experienced, and so you're not able to decipher between, you know, a woman who, whose booty actually is in right proportions to her legs. You know what I'm saying? No matter right. what size it is or, right. you know, um, just all of those things. And so it's some of that it's, I, I just often wonder like, is that, is it an age thing? Like we know we can turn it on and turn it off. Um, mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, just even, I do kind of feel like though on social media, we're kind of starting to see both sides of people's lives, you know, like we're seeing the bonnets and the filter. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm hoping that that at least helps with showing like, you know, hey, none of us look like this all day, every day. Um, yeah. But I'm worried you know. more about the, the teenagers, you know, um, cause that's where I'm also putting my focus on working with young women because they're delicate. I mean, they absorb everything. That's why they want that nose job at 16. I mean, mm -hmm. it's crazy how many nose jobs are at 16, 17 with a parental, you know, permission. Dollar permission, all of it. And because, you know, what that's they yeah. see, what they mm -hmm. see, yeah. you know what I mean? What's the ideal, what's the ideal body type? What's the ideal shape, no shape, you know, I mean, we can go on and on. So I'm concerned about the teen teenagers, you know, because they're yeah. struggling. They're well, that's why I think, yeah, they are. I mean, could you guys imagine having all this in high school? Man, I would have been, mm. no. yeah, no, thank you. No. They're suffering an addiction. I mean, it's an addiction as well. I mean, that's already been proven, you know, that social media, uh, it's an addiction. You can't, you, you know, you put your phone in the kitchen for, you can't leave it there for, if you hear a ding or notification, you're like, I got to go see it. You know what I mean? You, and, and me, I just practice, I don't have it on me all the time, you know, because I'm fighting that all the time. You know, I, I, I want to make sure that I even look at the hours I've spent on Instagram or social media, you know, where it gives you the time for the week. And I'm like, cool, I'm low, I'm low. You know what I mean? I pat myself mm -hmm. on the back because I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want my life to be defined by the feed, you know? If it doesn't feed your soul, get off. Come on, Ooh. don't be defined by the feed. Can defined I get a t-shirt? That is a word, okay? <laughs> Can I get a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Sunny Rose in the chat said, yeah, I'm concerned about the younger generations too. So true, Yon Rhonda. What pressure to attain unrealistic standards. And, you know, I think that's why it's important for us to have conversations like this because, that's you know, true. obviously we are, it's, we got to reach back. We got to reach back and get the people a few steps behind us so that they don't have to go through what we yeah. did and also mm -hmm. implement all of the things that they're going to need to keep themselves from that because, I feel overstimulated and I do think yeah. it's not only social media, but it is the TV, it's the lights, it's the activity outside. I get a little sensitive. I can feel when it's, I don't, I, you'll never catch me at a Coachella. I'm not doing it. It's too much. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like, I can feel. I'm, I'm claustrophobic. Just, everything is <laughs> claustrophobic. just, it can be a lot and I feel it in my body. So that's why it's so important that we're talking about self-care and taking these moments and breathing because I can feel it in my body when I'm doing too much. I'm, my breaths are short. Um, my attention, I have to tell myself today, just, Jamie, just do one thing. <laughs> Go turn on the Christmas lights. So I had to walk <laughs> over and be like, Christmas lights, just turn on the Christmas lights. Because me, I'm going to want to throw away the empty water right. bottle on the couch. Make sure to pick that up. Do the, do, oh, my God, there's a crumb on the floor. Let me go sweep. Let me close this door. The Christmas lights don't get up. I mean, it's that simple for me. And I can tell in those moments when I'm just... I, it, we look at Instagram like that. Oh my God, this is sad. Oh my God, who's winning the election? Oh my girl has a birthday, a baby. Like, <laughs> and I COVID was a prime example. Oh yeah. We all went crazy. I mean, we were like, you know, what's happening next today? Nobody. I mean, we we heard stories from every different source, false and true. But it's how just, do we that's decipher? Over stimulation. Like, I, you're evoking a feeling out of me every five seconds. Like, even he said. With sex, it's either sex or fear. I don't want to be scared to death either. Stop scaring me. Yeah, thank you. Right. Stop, scaring Please. Me. Please stop scaring stop me. Stop scaring me. Right. I don't need to know how many people got hospitalized today. Because you're going to tell me tomorrow. Like, stop. Tomorrow. You're going to tell right, me in right. three minutes. You're going to tell right. me in three minutes again. And it's already running again. across the bottom of the screen. And right. somebody already. just texted me about it. I yeah. Stop scaring me. I'm tired of running. So we have to do these extra baths, meditation clearing out, grounding by putting our feet in the grass, whatever extra we can do, yes. The extra is required because 2020, Let me this tech, this is extra. I want and to it's so you. much harder to like shut off, you know, because our lives are so integrated, you know, like I, I often try to take a social media sabbatical, 
But yeah. I find that I can't because, well, I find that I can't do it as long as I want to because it's like yeah. this need to to post for business purposes or being engaged, you know. So I still am trying to find what that balance is for me because I don't like having to be on there either as much between Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, and then my own emails, text messages and my work emails, my 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 business emails, my personal emails, my junk emails. You know, like it's just <laughs> my emails overflowing. I gotta delete some emails. My fourth email. Right. Check my fourth email. Too much. <laughs> and I'm not paying Gmail for more emails. No. Exactly. <laughs> no, right. But do you take um do you feel that you do have t- more time to get away to separate? away? I mean, you said, you know, you have, you feel like for business, but is that somewhat of an excuse for us sometimes? I mean, because do you just stop once you post the business or do you continue reading the feed? And do you con- continue searching, I'll be honest. Is it just work? Because there's no way that we're just doing work. We're, we're sucked in. Oh, it's an addiction, that, right. right? I'm totally getting sucked in. I'm sucked into the shade room. I'm sucked into, you know, whatever the key is of the day. I'm, I totally get sucked into it. I'm, I'm not right, gonna right, lie. right. Not gonna lie. Well, yeah. acknowledging it is the first step. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it is serious but business. I wanted to read Jamie what you said. You were like, oh, you're just yes. trying to get the, the the tree light turned on. That was so funny. I read this in an article, and I I I I, I saved it. Um, she said, we all agree with this. Women, that women wear so many hats. The mom, the caregiver, the nurturer, the food shopper, the chauffeur, the businesswoman. But the one hat that really they put on, that she puts on is the one that says self-care. That always seems to get shoved to the back of the closet. And it's the hat you look at, but say one day, one day. Is that us? One day, someday. That's true, right. True. In a minute, after I'm done launching this, after I get off, after I need to work out this after time always first, something. and then mm-hmm. let me get eight pounds, and then I'll do this. Or after it does, it gets very much like that. It I gets have pushed. To, I still to have to catch closet. myself. I got to catch myself. Like, yeah. girl, relax. You actually did do enough today. You can. You need to relax because mm-hmm. then you want. I'd be wanting to go into the hours in the morning. Sometimes it's in, inspiration. Sometimes it's crazy. So I do have to tell myself, you know, I, and that's why I say that I try to do all these other things and meditate and I bet, you know, I take breaks in the middle of the day, but there's still when my mind is constantly running and then I'll call myself taking a break, but I'm scrolling through Instagram. That does not feel like a break. Scrolling through Instagram doesn't feel like a break, nor is it really a break. So I had to remind myself even in that moment, put the phone down, right? Grab a book. If yeah. you could just read three pages and just have no nothing going on, just try that. But I know I related to that because I feel overstimulated <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> so the word of the day on that topic is balance. 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 Let's find, let's, that's what it is. We're not going to get rid of it. We're not going to put it down. Completely. Correct. But we'll work but- on balancing it. Yes, Black Women Speak in the chat said, today I had to take a moment and sit and celebrate and not think about the next thing. Some people got yes. to celebrate. Thank you. Being That's present in the actual Being, moment. Yes, Amen. being present. Yes. That was, Opal. Yes. yes, that's good. Opal's in the chat. Uh, relationship mm-hmm. therapist, Opal. So she said, everyone's process is different. Every experience is necessary, whether it be for healing, learning, etc. It's necessary for self-awareness and transformation. Yes, yeah, so I absolutely agree. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Yeah, so I mean, guys, we didn't put in our hour, but I had one more clip. You want to go for it or what are we doing? Let's go, let's go. Go for okay, it, one more clip, go ahead. This is a really good one and it's awesome. So I love to hear from men who want to be men, not men that, not guys mm-hmm. that complain about it being too hard mm-hmm. or this that. And don't get me wrong, as humans, some things to gripe about, but you know what I'm saying when somebody's just like, I'm a man. So hold on, here we go. I right. think that there is purity in pain. And I think that men are meant to deal with pain daily, whether it's the pain of discipline, whether it's the pain of 
physical, you know, physical training, spiritual training, whatever it is, I think that many need, need to be dealing with pain and getting calluses on some part of their life daily. Okay. Again, my mind is cutting off, so I'm I'm relying on it, you guys. Yeah, it cuts out a little bit. So what he was saying is he feels like men are equipped to go through pain daily, and they should invite the opportunities to go through pain, get some calluses on some parts of their body, spiritual body, emotional body, or whatever, by pushing themselves and doing what they need to do. Because men aren't, they're built men for a reason, not just to push buttons on a computer, but to show up and do the hard things. So mm. um, what do you guys think about that? I definitely, you know, while he said that about men, I actually believe that to be true for just humans in general. Like none of us are designed to just sit Push. and press buttons and sit in a cubicle or, you know what I mean? Like not getting out in nature and not having these, you know, these real integrated lives. I don't think any of us are, are truly designed for that. Um, the pain aspect that he was talking about too, you know, that can... I think that can also extend in certain areas. It may not be, I, I don't want calluses on my hand. I'll, I'll leave that to y'all. <laughs> Although y'all I do, have, calluses, yeah. But right. you got calluses on your heart. I was going to say that on my there heart. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. right. There are calluses so, on my heart now. But is that those calluses that are on our heart, is that because we were working hard or, you know, like, or the areas where we were, pushed into like a place of like discomfort. Cause that was actually what I, you know, what I gathered from what he was saying of like, men need to basically be uncomfortable and in some level of pain every day. And um, I think that there's something to be said about that for everybody, because that's how we can build our own resistance and build muscle. You know, you True. have to, you have to go, have to you have to endure that. A little bit more weight on, you know, in order to get that's stronger. So, so, that's, so true. that's something, you know, that, that all of us can, um, can definitely, you know, feel, but you know, the physical pain part, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, right, the physical pain part, they did get the muscles and the this and that, doesn't mean women can't lift things, but it just means why don't you go on? Cause like you said, I just got my nails done and I don't wanna be grabbing and touching on anything with no calluses, so I get that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are different, we are still different. You know, but I do agree with that part Keontra said where it's like that's it's a human it's thing something. because yeah, I'm like I shared earlier, I'm down with the G stuff. Like I'm down to what's up? I'm competitive. I'm willing to overcome right. my stuff. Like I'm willing right. to face things. I'm willing to go balls to the wall, even though I don't have balls. So I definitely agree because this is the way my dad speaks. Again, I was raised military that we do have to do the hard things because my thing is, do. if you're not doing the hard things, how are you growing? How about that? Break that ceiling. How, are you, how do you grow to the next level? If you're not willing to, yeah, okay, so I can do 100 crunches. We going to stop there or are we doing two? If I can't do 110, I'm not going to be able to do two. Right. So it's like, what are you going to do to push pat, harden those parts, um, strengthen those muscles in whatever area? I just feel like... Um, I'm very appreciative to hear a man speak that way because even doing the series is healing and knowledgeable and all this for me. I haven't always given myself the luxury to, you know, date a man with as much of a good head on his shoulders as he could have. So it's refreshing to know that, you know, there are people out there that want to be better, that want to sacrifice. Yes. You're not going to be comfortable all the time. You're sacrificing, okay? Mm -hmm. Stop being selfish. Stop being comfortable. There's going to be moments where stuff ain't your way. But if you can't see that there is value on the other side and growth and all of the, if and you don't the have that mindset, I, I, there's like literally nothing I can do with you. Like, yeah. I don't even know how to communicate because yeah. that's too much work. It is too much work. And I know that I absolutely cannot be with anybody who is not committed to their own personal growth. Like they're just, yes. is, you know, we just really don't have a lot in common. We don't value the same thing. We're not going to be able to have the same type of depth in our conversations. It's just, yeah. It, it's We're just, not going to be able to pull each other out of certain holes. No. When you're down there. No. I don't have no clue about what it feels like to have my heart broken, to have lost, to have tried no. and failed, to have, felt like if I don't have any of that how am I going to be what you need as a friend uh, you know so there's levels to this thing 
And if you're no, not willing true. to, you know, go for it, your level is going to be, you know, with less stuff on it. <laughs> and there's and what, another thing I always, I start to live by is there's no gray area because either you live or you die or you're dying. Mm. Either you're moving forward or you're going backwards. There's no standing still because time mm. doesn't, you know what I'm saying? So there's no gray area really. Mm. You, it's just mm. moving backwards. There's no gray area. So if you're not pushing, like you said, for your dreams and your goals, or you're not pushing through that discomfort, you won't grow, of course, because the growth is in the discomfort, which we all understand. But I say that, Rhonda, if you are not moving forward, you're not in the gray area, you're not in the standstill, you're moving backwards. Everyone else is moving forward. The minute you yeah. stop, you're moving backwards. You know? Yeah. That's with the growth. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. remember that. With the growth, yeah. See what happens when you stop exercising when you stop eating are you living no you're you're starting to die no you know, the ice cream is fail. going to my tummy no i'm not living around <laughs> <laughs> i'm not living Eventually, at all thank god the yeah. season is over <laughs> not. the way these cookies and cakes that Honey, they set up you are not growing you are shrinking well i'm growing all right let's go to the chat <laughs> Uh, Sunny Rose said, so are men designed to bear the weight of the everyday struggle in a way, in a different way than women? I suspect infertility in women may have something to do with women that are overstressed. Ooh. Uh, I def, so I'm, I'll just say real quick, I'm somebody who believes in like the roles. I'm cool with that. Um, I don't right. think the roles and the rules have to go for everybody. But I naturally, I'm domesticated. I help take care of my sisters. I like to cook, clean, love on my house. And I, but don't get me wrong, I love to work. I love to create. I know what God put in me. I got purpose. I got all that. So all of that to say is I believe that when a man is willing to bear the weight in certain ways, when he's met with a woman that can match his hustle, they're in they're taking care of each other. There'll be different seasons for different things and different nuances within the relationship dynamic, but I definitely think, yeah, if a man is willing to step in and be like, I'll t I'll pay the house bills, I'll, you know, do this. If you could just, like, if we can run it out like that, I'm good because him paying the house bills doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything, but I don't have to say that because I'm a woman of purpose and I show up every day in my stuff. And I have been before a man, after a man, prior to a man, during to a man. So I think it's just all how we, we pair up. That's my take up. Exactly it. what you just said. It's the matchup. I can't tell you how to live and I can't say this relationship is the wrong way because in some cultures, the men cook. Great. I'll eat. I'll I'm eat. cool with that. I will eat. eat a you know what I mean? So it's to, eat, to each his own. Again, like you said, it's definitely. And I love that about you, Jamie, because you're a very strong, powerful, independent woman, but you still mm. want a man to be the man. And I love that. And that's what more of us need to be like, I mean, those of us that are going in that direction, you know what I mean? You are very strong. You are very independent. <laughs> I love that. I mean, that's what I am, but I'm saying, but at the same time, you have such a feminine side that you Aww. let it, let you let it show you there's, you know what I mean? You don't have too much crust on you, not too hard on, you know, not, no, no crust, no, no crust. crust. <laughs> we moist. We moist, no crust. You don't walk around, you know, I mean, your vibe and energy, I want to, you know, you, a man would want to be around you, the right one, you know what I mean? Because that's important, you know what I mean? You can still be an independent woman and still be feminine and let the man be masculine. You know, it takes us learning and, you know, we're, we're still learning, you know, like you said, there's growth. But I, but I like, I mean, like you, I do believe in that whole family. You know, I don't mind a man being a man, you know what I mean? But um, I, 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 I just wanted to tell you that. Like, thank you, girl. I love, I love, I love that. I know. I love that about you. I'm saying that that's you're exactly what I think a woman should aspire to be as far as a, when you want a family and you want, you know, to be a boss. You know what I mean? Like I've met I know some other women um, that are very hard, like I don't need a man. Mm. And they're so why are you so miserable looking every day? Why are you so mean? Why are you so mean about it when I bring it up? <laughs> There's something there. <laughs> The problem. <laughs> Why do you have to? You know, I'm just asking you. Hey, you have? To, do you know? Are you looking to get married? Or you have a man in your life? You, I don't need a man. I got my job. I own my house. I ask all that. 
<laughs> Let me hook you up, my friend Jamie. Let her talk to you about it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I, I do agree with you, Rhonda. I do think that Jamie embodies the mm -hmm. basically like the duality that's okay for us, you know, like mm -hmm. and basically giving other women permission to do that. Because I, again, I think that we're socialized and sometimes we feel like we have to choose between. Yes. You know, wanting to be ambitious and feeling bad and being, you know, made to feel guilty about that. But then yes. also the other side of us, it's like, look, it's okay. There's a season when I'm going to want to be taken care of. I want to just be at home with what's wrong with it, that. You know what I mean? Or whatever, and just be the domestic queen. And that's totally okay too. So being able to, to embrace all of those things and embody it and that it doesn't have to look, you know, so polarizing. Like, I think that that's great. And I agree, Jamie, you, you, you already know, girl. You totally embody. <gasps> oh, you yes. to be able to go after it. So, thank you. That really blesses me, especially you know, with doing this work and um, really just following my intuition on it. And you know, I just wrote an e-course that I'm putting out next week, and it's I've, it's something new, and I've never done it before. But this is definitely confirmation that what I have to share and what I have to give meets that balance. I feel like yes, in a way where balance. whether you're a single woman or you're a woman in a relationship and still kind of getting in alignment with your stuff that you can stand in a posture that is strong and healthy and magnetizing everything that you want to you. Like just unlearning all that stuff and relearning it unlearning. in a way where unlearning. Yes. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Balance. Like so we have balance. <laughs> balance and unlearning. Yes. Ooh. And, and it's real. It's so real. Opal in the chat said, that's why it's difficult because we are integrated. Wait, that's why it's difficult because we are integrated. So we're easily sucked in. Yes. Finding that healthy integration is so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what you're speaking to is um, we're easily sucked into like the roles. Oh, we've integrated. Yes. I mean, again, it's one of those things people can kind of define for their own relationship, but have the space to do it your way. I don't know. You need a lot of space for that. There's kind of like no guidelines. Okay. So, okay. So this is my last question with this last clip that we had. Um, and we kind of talked about all this, but just for the sake of sharing it. How do you feel technology has made us comfortable as opposed to more tenacious to overcome obstacles? Like, do you think the technology and accessibility has affected our men, that hunting mentality that, you know, do you think the way that everything is made so much easier now, it's kind of shaved some fire off of the tenacious need to overcome an obstacle? Like, are we expecting to just overcome an obstacle? I think so. They're, they're absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Like you can see you swipe left or right. Um, I think we talked a little bit about this with, after the interview with Malik, where, you know, he was like, it's just so easy for men to connect with women on social media that they forget. And we were actually absolutely. bringing the point that we forget of like, there is still some work to do offline, you know, like it's, yeah, it might be easier to meet somebody, but the work doesn't stop there. And unfortunately it gets, you know, like it gets stuck and it stays in that place of being online. And so, um, you know, not to just bash social media, but even, um, gosh, I mean, I don't know if it's a bad or a good thing, but like for certain types of jobs, you don't necessarily have to leave your home anymore. <laughs> like everything is, is accessible. So there, it has its pros and its cons where, you know, like you can basically just be, you know, on your computer. And so the hunt is different than the primal hunt, you know, in the way that we, we thought about it before. Um, so, so it's an interesting, it definitely is an interesting thing to think about of, of how technology plays a role in that. Yeah, I, I mean, it low key makes sense to me. Um, Black Women Speak says the microwave society, everyone wants it now and society justifies now. And we all know Ooh. that the reality of the situation is this is a slow roasted life, okay? This is like <laughs> marinating the juices and add a little bit and baste a little, because this is, this is a journey. Like, I don't want some of this stuff overnight. It just wouldn't taste as good. Everyone wants, yeah. True that. I love it. 
all of these. Well, ladies, we done covered everything that I had. I love everything that Steven shared. This was a really fun one, built different. I think we learned yeah. and like <laughs> had fun. Any closing remarks with everything? Any ideas that you didn't share or just something to wrap up the episode as a whole or just anything that you want to share before we bounce? Ooh, another good conversation. Grateful for the platform and the opportunity to, you know, just to riff on what these men are sharing. Like I definitely always learn something um, and can appreciate that it's not always going to come from the same perspective or the same thought process, but you know, it's all good. Um, thanks to everybody in the chat. The chat's been popping tonight too. Chat, so you the real MVP. Oh, the chat was crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, like so much engagement. So thank you all for being here and for for the support. Absolutely love it. Yes, and do you? And what about you, Rhonda? Any closing remarks or anything? Thanks for joining us. This is your first time on the show. It was, it was just so exciting. You know, I mean, I'm I'm so grateful. I mean, to be beside two wonderful, beautiful, intelligent <laughs> women. I don't even know what to say. I just wanna keep growing and learning. And this is, Jamie, you and I have talked about this maybe a few years ago, you know, how important it is for us to come together and not just talk about makeup and, you know, whoops, hair and such and such and such. We gotta, we, we have to expand into making um, money. Like we, touching on the fear thing that we women tend to have, it's okay for us to start talking about money, how we're gonna make money and how to be, and, and, and everything about balance. Everything's about balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what I wanna leave everyone with, balance. After all of our topics and discussions, um, everything that we hit on, balance. Cause we're not gonna, we're not gonna put it down, but balance and to take back your power in the mornings. I just wanna, Start off proactive, not reactive. Yes, I love that. And that's so true. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And Black Women Speak, she said, when it comes to relationships, there was a time when the mantra was, I am worth the weight. So if you mm -hmm. guys want to take home, I am worth the weight, there's that's a great. mantra. And since, yeah, and since we were quickly talking about money, one of my favorite mantras right now is, I have plenty of money to spare and plenty of money to share. Oh, I, like that. <laughs> I love it. Everyone said great show, excellent, all of the things. Um, yes, is she, <laughs> oh, that was nice. This is the show to watch on Thursday night, like must see TV on NBC back in the eighties. Yes. T-G-I-T. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so the much chat for tuning room, in. Though, the, the chat room was lit. They were challenging. They, the, y'all were. Oh yeah, the ladies that come in here do they not were, play. They were so definitely they were, can't wait. They were ready. They were. <laughs> I can't wait to go back and read them all too. So thank you guys for tuning in. We'll have another episode of Kings Speak on Tuesday. And then, of course, we got to follow up with the ladies on Thursday so we can glean from what the men had to say and just like this conversation, add our little flavor to it and kind of just see how we feel about um, all that stuff so we can harmonize these relationships and get in alignment with each other and build a love culture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just messing with y'all. And Make happy sure birthday, Kiara. Yes, happy birthday, Key Renee. Um, don't forget to follow, follow King on Instagram. And I think that's all the things. All right, y'all. Have a great Thursday, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.